Welcome back to Educator.com and our series on JavaScript. Today we're going to be discussing objects. All right, first of all, the concept of objects is pretty important in JavaScript and really all object-oriented programming languages. And you can think of objects in terms of parts of speech. If we're talking about parts of a sentence, we'd have nouns, verbs, and adjectives. You can think of objects as being a noun. You know, they are things. And they are things that we write into our programs and we want to have things done to them or we want those things to do other things. Calculations, display text, whatever we want. So really what we have are methods to act as the verbs. All right, so we've got the object, which is the thing, and then the method is what we want to have done to it. Uh, calculations, the way it's displayed, different fonts, different sizes, and we're going to see examples as we go here. The other thing that you can think about is properties, which are very similar to adjectives. And so just because you have a noun doesn't, doesn't mean that you know exactly everything that there is to know about that noun, uh, about the car, about the tree. You know, you might want to use adjectives to further describe it. And we can do the same thing here in JavaScript. All right, so let's talk about a couple examples. First of all, Let's say that we're dealing with a very common object in JavaScript, which is a string, a string of characters. If we want to convert that string from lowercase to uppercase, or just ensure that all of the characters in that string are uppercase, we would use a method that we describe as the two uppercase method. So in JavaScript code, it looks like this. We define and declare our variable. Say this variable is going to be str for a string, and we say that we want the variable to be hello world. And then we put that string into a document write statement, and we use then the uppercase, the two uppercase method to act upon that object. What is the object? What is the noun? The text string. What did we do to it? We converted it to uppercase, or we ensured that all the characters were uppercase. All right, let's look at another example here. In this example, we've got uh, text being the object, you know, a regular text string again, and we've got the text length property serving as type of an adjective. So in our code, we declare the variable. This time we just say it's a straight text variable, hello world again. And then we put a document write statement, and we say that we want to include not necessarily the text itself, but the text length. We're going to see this in, in one of our examples, where if you say document write text length, it won't write hello world. It'll write the number of characters in that string. Because we didn't ask it for the string itself. We asked it for the length of the string, the adjective, the modifier, or you know, the length or the color or you know, any type of adjective that you might include in a property. Now, when it comes to JavaScript, there are many objects, uh, 25, 50, maybe even 100 different objects. And all of these objects have their own set of properties, their own set of methods that go along with them. Some very common ones are an array. And you can think of an array as like a grid. Sometimes it's a very simple grid. Sometimes it's a complicated grid that has many cells or elements. We've got a whole section on arrays coming up in our series on JavaScript. So we'll learn more about arrays as we go. Uh, Boolean objects, so you might want to have something in there that just provides a yes, no, true, false, a one or a zero. Date objects, date objects are often concerned with formatting. You know, you want long date, you want to display the date and the year. You want to spell out the month, or like for March, do you want it as a three, or do you want to spell out the word, M-A-R-C-H. So you've got date objects. We have form objects. We're going to take a look at a form object today. And forms are very useful because forms uh, are used a lot on the internet to enter information, to get user input. So you might have a text box, you might have a label over that text box or next to it so that the user can click in that text box in a form and type in information. You can then use that web page to collect information from your users. And then, you know, some of these objects work together. They work together. So, you know, typically you'd have information entered into a form, and then that form would then pass it to an array object, and the array would store it. See, so it sort of functions as a database in that way. Math objects, we've seen a lot of math objects so far to do calculations, exponents. We're going to see a math object today with the absolute value method. Number objects, 
So remember the difference, main difference between a number object or a number uh, character and a string character is numbers are mainly used to do math and things like uh, even some codes like zip codes or phone numbers, you might think they are numbers, but they really function more like text because you're not going to use a phone number in a math expression. You're not going to use a zip code to add to another zip code. You know, they're really codes. They, they function more like text. Um, string objects, we talked about. Strings of characters, usually alphabetical. And uh, window objects for your web pages or for how your windows are going to open up, minimize, maximize buttons, uh, how the window is displayed, what the window displays, what you want to put through the window, and then document objects for uh, documents, text, you know, long, uh, large collections of data. All right, then there's one more concept about objects that we are going to cover today, and that is the concept of regular expressions. Now, what regular expressions mean is they are objects that are used to locate and manipulate patterns of characters. So these patterns of characters, you can think of a regular expression as being a pattern. And that could be any string of characters. So it's sort of like a string, but when we use them in regular expression syntax, it will function as, a, an, uh, as an object. You'll see some examples too. And so these regular expressions can be searched for within specified st other strings of characters. So sometimes strings of characters, especially on web pages where there's a lot of text, can get quite long and you want to locate and you don't necessarily want to break all those characters up into separate lines uh, or separate words. They might not even be words. They might just be characters. And you want to search for a pattern within that set of characters. You can use uh, regular expressions to do that. All right, so let's take a look at uh, a few coding examples. Okay, our first example here, we have an object uh, method with the string to uppercase uh, activity. And we, it's a very simple program here, you just see how it works. We identify our string just like we did in our example. And that string we want to say and return the text, hello world. So we put in a document right line, but then we add the string to uppercase method, open close parentheses, and even though we see that we have not typed the whole string in uppercase letters, when we run this through the browser, the method will take care of it and it will convert it all to uppercase. So let's see how this works. If I run this program now, you'll see that when the text loads, the browser displays it as all uppercase. So even though we didn't write it all as uppercase, it displays as uppercase because of the method that we used. All right, let's go to our second example here. In this one, we set it up very similarly. We say that the variable is going to be a text string, hello world again. But now, instead of document write and have the text string returned, we just say document write and text length. We use the text length method and modifier and the property. So let's see what this looks like. All right, you see when we open this program through the browser, it does not display the text, hello world. It displays the number of characters in that text string. Why? Because we said text.length, and then it just returns the length number of characters rather than the text itself. All right, here in our third example, we have got a lot of text, and it's going to be displayed in various ways. And so here we are using a lot of different methods. And you will see that even though we are just using one variable text string, we just say hello world, look at all the document write statements that we've got listed here. And we say text using the big property, text using small, bold, italics, fixed, strikeout, changing the font color to green, for example font size, superscript and subscript down here. So you can see how this is really, you know, we're getting into word processing features and how to do them in JavaScript. All right, so let's take a look 
at this in the browser, and then this is an interesting one down here where we're using the blink property, and we'll see that that you know just flashes the text on and off. All right, so when you see this text through the browser, you can see how all of the properties are labeled, big, small, bold, italics, and strike out font color, changing the font size. We bumped it up to six. That's right there. Superscript and subscript, using it as a hyperlink, displaying text as a hyperlink, and then our blink method, which you can see it works in Firefox. We're using Firefox right now, but that blink is not that blink function, that blink um, uh, method uh, property is not supported in Microsoft, IE, Chrome, or Safari, but all the rest of them are. All right, if we go to our next example, here we are going to use a match method. And the string match method will search a string and then return something in quotes if it finds it. So here you can see we want to search for world all in lowercase. These are case sensitive. We want to search for world with the W capitalized. We want to search for and see if there's a match on world that's purposely misspelled here so you can see what happens. And we want to search for string match world with an exclamation point at the end. So if you look at our string, we should be able to predict what's going to happen here. World all lowercase, that does match, so we should get a match there. World with a W in uppercase, that does not exist, so we should not get a match there. Same thing with the misspelling of world with two L's. And world with a exclamation point after it, even though we already searched for world, you can also search for a longer string that contains that substring here with world and the exclamation point. So let's see how this looks in the browser. All right, here you see we get the, just like we predicted, uh, world all lowercase that is displaying on the first line. Then because it did not find the next two, we've got a null and then a null. So it says it searched the string, could not find that example. And then world with the exclamation point as the last one. All right, when we go to our next example, we're going to use the string replace method. And this is sort of like a find and replace, if you're familiar with that process. So in our variable string, we ask the question, where can you learn JavaScript? And initially, we say nowhere. But here in our document write statement, after a couple break lines that we throw in, we throw in the string as it is, and then we throw the string in on the second line with the replace method. And we identify it's got the, the replace uh, method and property has two arguments, two, two uh, sub-properties. We say nowhere is what we're going to search for, then separated by a comma, and then we say educator.com as what we want to replace that string with. All right, so let's take a look at this. All right, so here in the browser, you can see initially it just writes the string as we typed it out because we just said document write line, write the string. Where can you learn JavaScript? Nowhere. And then the second time we ran the replace, it replaced nowhere with educator.com. So it lists the whole sentence, where can you learn, uh, where can you learn JavaScript? Educator.com. All right, in uh, this example, we are going to use a start time function, and this is going to display uh, the system clock. So if you ever want a time uh, to be displayed on your web